Yeah, so today is the eighth day of April. I welcome you one and all to our first set of lectures in ACE 812912, 812 for the master students and uh, 912 for the doctoral students, uh, advanced trends in uh, STEM education and research. I welcome in particular all our vice chancellors who are here, notably, notably the vice chancellor, University of Ibadan. Uh, I'm not able to see the VC of uh, uh, this thing, but more importantly, uh, uh, our great, uh, our great uh, daddy, uh, Professor Nimi Briggs, uh, who uh, has been able to consistently, you know, be here to join us. So welcome one and all. Uh, today, uh, we we're going to be, let me share my screen. The first lecture, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, on a brief history of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. As I said, today is the 8th of April. Now, uh, I'd like you to know that the sequence of the lectures for today I'm going to intervene for about 25 minutes, and I'm going to look at where we were. So it's history. Professor Mosto Noha will come on and tell us where we are for 40 minutes. Of course, after each presentation, we're going to have question and answer. The third presentation will be pivoting to the future, and uh, Professor Bill Kai from the US uh, it will be joining us about 5 a.m. That's uh, East will be at 11. It will be pivoting to the future of COVID-19 and climate emergency, 40 minutes. I'm happy to tell you that all our facilitators uh, have agreed to develop their presentations into a course text, which will publish about August. And uh, it, will con it will contain your full, the full lecture notes and written in an ODL, open and distance learning format, so that you can uh, interact with the text materials uh, at your convenience. So this part of the story is a brief, super brief history of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and uh, mathematics. So let's begin with a quick dive into definitions. Definition of science, definition of technology, definition of engineering, and of mathematics. So we're diving into this. Let's take science. If I ask you one and all, what is science? Uh, you all will have some very wonderful definitions about science. In 1984, Professor Bajia and I conducted, under the auspices of the Science Teachers Association of Nigeria, conducted, conducted a nationwide uh, study which came out in Stan, that Science Teachers Association of Nigeria, Stan Position Paper Number 1. And uh, the, the title of that position paper is What is Science? And we documented views of top race scientists, uh, science teachers, students, and all from all over Nigeria. And, that, and uh, there is a recent book where uh, I provided some definition of science. So I'm sharing with you uh, from the, the, the sources, the two sources. So... Science is uh, a study of nature in order to formulate general laws about the natural world and the products of such enterprise. It means that science has a process and it has some products. The other definition is science is a discipline attempt, discipline attempt to find out what exists, how things work, what does not exist. <laughs> Coronavirus. But could exist. Or the other another variant of coronavirus, God forbid, and how such things will work if they existed. Now, the goal of science is uh, to develop general laws. All the scientists that you have in the class today, uh, Professor Eduola Inka, VC of uh, a great uh, VC of University of Ibadan, a great uh, geo uh, physics geo scientist, uh, Professor Demi Breeze, a great medical scientist. All we are aiming to do is to develop general laws. That will explain how the world wo world around us works and why things happen the way they do. Let's go to technology. You know, we're defining STEM. We're taking science, 
Let's look at technology. Technology, you can see application. Application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes. And is uh, also defined as technology uh, is applying scientific knowledge to find answers and fix problems. Can you see what I'm seeing? I'm seeing scientific, scientific in these definitions after science. So what is engineering? Engineering is taken to be a branch of science and technology. So you can see science has come up again, popped up everywhere. Concerned with the design, building, and use of engines, machines, and structures. And engineering, engineering uh, is also taken to be a scientific field and job that involves taking a scientific understanding of the natural world and using it to invent, design, and build things to solve problems and achieve practical goals. We're going to the last one, the end part of our STEM, that is mathematics. Uh, Professor Rashid uh, Sonny will be happy here. This is his turf, his terrain. It's the study of numbers, shapes, and patterns. And it's the science, because it's science again, that deals with the logic of shape, quantity, and arrangement. So, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, it means, therefore, that if we take the history of science, we'll be able to see technology, engineering, and mathematics come into play. So what I'm going to do in the remaining uh, uh, 20 minutes that I have is to dive into the history of science. So because the history of STEM is largely the history of science. So let's look at the origin of science, or in this case STEM. The logic, ladies and gentlemen, is that since we have defined science as a human enterprise, then science began with the early humans. So when your early humans appeared on Earth, that's when science began. So the early humans, let's take a little bit, uh, a bit of it. Uh, we know from our science that life originated on Earth about three to four point two billion years ago, and that Africa, yes, our Africa, that's where we had the first humans, and much of human evolution uh, developed uh, occurred here. Now, the fossil of early humans, uh, I'm sure uh, Professor Idola Inka, VC of uh, University of Ibadan, who's a great geologist here, geoscientist, geo, geo, geo uh, will confirm the early humans lived between 6 and 2 million years ago. And they come entirely, you know, from Africa. So these early humans, you can see them, they have to meet their needs for food, for shelter. And for health. So they have to explore the world around them. So if you say science is uh, exploring the world, it means this, these people were some form of scientists. So that is to say that true science began with the early humans. Homo sapiens, that's us, we're the modern humans. Now we arrived on this earth about 200,000 and 3,000 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm putting on my science cap now. If I put on my uh, Christian religious hat, it would be a different story. So I, I keep the two in uh, two sides of my head. So uh, we, we, we appeared here 200,000, 300,000 years ago. And we're only able to develop capacity for language. In other words, to be able to communicate with you just about 50,000 years ago. Uh, the early humans, as we said, came out from Africa, but they started moving out of Africa to other parts of the world from 70,000 to 100,000 years ago. That's us, Homo sapiens. What's my conclusion? Ladies and gentlemen, my conclusion is that Africa is the cradle of human civilization and also cradle of origin of science. I'm sure you'll agree, would agree with that. But I'd like, I like us to know that the early scientists Great early scientists means that they had great early scientists lived in Burundi, they were in DRC, they were in Ghana, they were in Nigeria. Uh, these are members of our of our class and other parts of Africa. We are great scientists in these uh, countries. Now let's look at the development of science. It's interesting to know that at some point, science will accelerate in its development, and at some other points, it will decelerate. We're going to see in a minute. We're happy to tell you that, and I'm sure many of us know, 
that Africa had a very early lead, very early lead in science. About 3,000 years before Christ, the Egyptians invented papyrus. You know, before that time, you had the Mesopotamia, the, the Mesopotamia they, they, they were writing things on stones. So to carry a message from me to some other place, I didn't have to carry stones. But the Egyptians invented papyrus, you know, from the, from the papyrus, uh, from the ribs. And uh, uh, it was a great invention at that time. And they were very skilled, the Egyptians, sophisticated in medical practice. Look at the man on my right here, Imhotep. He was renowned for his knowledge of medicine. Uh, you see, Imhotep, great man, will do surgery, albeit crude. When somebody has some injury and all of that, he will take bread mold, the mold of bread, and use it to rub the, <laughs> rub the, rub the uh, injury. Within a few days, the injury would dry up, and they say, oh, this is magic, but it's medicine. Until later, when Fleming, when we got penicillin, to find out that from the mold, that was where uh, the, the penicillin in the mold. So you can see how far we did it back, Africa. The pyramids, the sphinx, great wonders of the world, architecture. I mean, if you're looking at mathematics, you are looking at uh, physics, you are looking at all, the pyramids will exemplify that. So this... Uh, I, I was I was there. Uh, you can see about a year and a half ago, uh, the pyramid in Egypt. And the next slide, you'll be happy to see our grandpa, Professor Briggs, and I. You can see the Sphinx here. Baba Briggs, you know, uh, and I were to were there in Egypt to to see the science and everything there, and we're quite amazed at the medicine that is even practiced even there today. So the Chinese came in 1,000 years before Christ. And they were the first to use compasses to aid their travel. I'm going to move fairly fast now. Then what has been regarded by the historians of science as true science began to emerge between 600 BC and 500 AD. You know the time. we we'll go from, from uh, the higher figure to coming down, 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 down to 0 to 1 AD and start going up again. So you can see 600 BC to 500 AD. Uh, it, it, it is claimed by the history books that true science began at that period because that's when the collection of uh, facts and observations were then used to explain the natural world. And then entered these three people that are regarded as the first real scientists, Thales, Anaximander, and Anaximenes. What did they do? Thales or Miletus was the one to study the heavens, looked up the, the heavens, and he saw the movement of the heavenly bodies, the planets and the stars, and he recorded them and shared his uh, findings. Then Anaximander of Miletus, probably a pupil of Thales, he was more interested in studying life, not the heavenly bodies. And he tried to explain the origin of the human race without reference to God. Uh, and, uh, so he's not my friend. Now he believed that all life began in the sea. And at one time humans were actually some sort of fish. And as you are aware, this idea now resonated and was uh, developed further by Charles Darwin. Which is called evolution. Let's go to the third person, Anaximenes of Miletus. And as many of us believe that the air was the most basic substance in nature, and tried to explain all of them, uh, and uh, he, 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 had, he tried to explain them by to say that one of the most important things in life is air, and that led to the concept of atoms. I said Miletus first, Miletus second, Miletus third. So where is this Miletus, ladies and gentlemen? You want to ask? Miletus is a Greek. Uh, city and is by you know Turkey around here. This is this where it is. Uh, Miletus gave rise to several great people, and that is why you know uh, we have uh, uh, Africans uh, should also strive hard to uh, encourage development of great scientists. We do, we're talking about Greek scientists, the three of them, the first three. Now the, the uh, three other notable great scientists I want to mention: Aristotle. Is often referred to as the father of life sciences. Now, Aristotle was the first to make classification of animals and plants, taxonomy. He was the first. We go to Archimedes. Archimedes lived 
about 100 years after after Aristotle. And they applied math mathematical formula. You know the thing about buoyancy, you know, Archimedes principle, uh, the story uh, uh, that uh, he, uh, the Eureka story, he went into the bath, he was trying to find out the weight of a regular object, he went into the bath and he saw that water was spilling. I said, oh yeah, this is the way in which I can find the volume of uh, the regular object if I can take the uh, uh, the water that spills out of uh, the you know, the bath, that will give me, if I measure the volume, that will give me the volume of the object. So these people were quite creative, very innovative. Now, let's take Ptolemy. Hmm. Ptolemy looked at the heavens, he saw the plans, pl planets and stars, and he studied them. He made a complete description of these planets and stars. I studied Ptolemy very deeply when I was in graduate school. And you need to see the, the details of recording that he had. Now, he assumed the geocentric view. He had the geocentric view of uh, the world. That is, the Earth is the center of the universe. And that all the other planets were just orbiting around him. How wrong can he be? But of course, he had to be wrong. He didn't have the instruments for, uh, for, for uh, getting uh, something that is otherwise. So... Uh, the progress of science, you know, I told you, science will accelerate and science will decelerate. Between 500 AD and 1000 AD, oh, science decelerated, or science stalled. It stalled because we had a group of people called alchemists. I mean, they were doing very funny science. You know, what they turned everything to gold. And concocted all manner of things. There are more, <laughs> more of magicians than scientists. And during that period again, we had the Dark Ages, a lot of fight to fight all over the place and plague and all. So science decelerated. But after that, between 1500 AD and 1600 AD, we had what we call the Golden Age of science. Now, there were Quite, these were quite incredible times. You find within this period a lot of developments, a lot of inventions. And uh, Nicholas Copernicus, in uh, 1543, uh, actually kicked off the, the, this period, the Golden Age. And you also had Johannes Kepler, you know, Kepler's laws. He also observed the heavens and he developed, as I said, Kepler, uh, Kepler's laws. And uh, the heliocentric system started gaining. And then Galileo, Galileo Galilei, uh, who provided evidence in favor of the heliocentric system in 68. I'm telling you, 69, I'm telling you that the church didn't like it. And they had to pepper them. Pepper them would mean, you know, force them to recant. Because the, the church believed that the God, I mean, the center uh, uh, planet Earth, was the center of the universe and all the other things running around it. But this will not come up to say, oh, no, 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 we are nowhere. We are running around the sun. So that's heliocentric. That sun, helio, is the center. So Galileo had a lot of trouble with, uh, with the church, and quite a number of them were killed. A number of them were killed, disciples. So now we have the era of Isaac Newton, Newton, this period, and then the Enlightenment came on. Uh, the Enlightenment and the Industrial Revolution. That accelerated science. And science also accelerated engineering and technology, even mathematics. So Carl Linnaeus published his uh, book which classified living creatures during this period. And to uh, uh, move very fast in the, in, the, in, the, in my narration, now these are the scientists of the age of the Enlightenment. Randy Descartes, Francis Bacon, Nicholas Copernicus, uh, the Lambert, Chateau, and all of this. So you can see them, Habermas. These were scientists. Uh, so science in the first industrial revolution is what we want to take on next. And when was this industrial revolution? Started in 1760, excuse me. So sometime between 1820 and 1840. So all the scientific knowledge that people have been accumulated, all you know, now we're turned into inventions and use this invention for machines. So engineering has, has not come in, technology has not come in. And this period is called the 
first industrial revolution. If you check your course outline, you find that I'm to take you a, uh, take you a topic which is from the first to the uh, fourth industrial revolution. I'm sure we're all going to enjoy that that topic. So these are the scientists that uh, uh, featured. Some of the scientists, or quite quite a number of them, just what, of Davy, Michael Faraday. Franz Bacon, Thomas Edison, Sturgeon, Bernard, and all of this. So there were very many of them that featured during the Industrial Revolution, you know, adding things, inventing things, and all of that. So the rest of the 19th century, that's last century, last century, you had people like Darwin, Louis Pasteur, Gregor Mendel, Michael Faraday, and, and Liu. Then modern science from 1900 to the present, you had Albert Einstein, his book. Look, if I'm to list all of them, you get uh, several pages thick. So, uh, what I want to do is to uh, now ask a question. If you noticed all through this presentation, you've been seeing people from the other side of other side of the world. Let, let, let's look at them. Look at all of this. Uh, you only can see uh, people of African origin. You can't see Af African origin. So, but when you get, so did Africa go to sleep, ladies and gentlemen? Did we go to sleep? After our very early lead, of course not. Uh, we, we had people like Editor Babagumi, a great biochemist, Wangari Matai, a great environmentalist, uh, Thomas Risley Odiambo, entomologist, Deborah Ajakaye, who's still living, uh, physicist, Hamed as well, you know, great uh, uh, scientist from, uh, uh, from Egypt. So we are still making making some efforts. Uh, so what have we learned in this brief history? Please be assured that I will continue to uh, uh, share with you thoughts on the history. I will keep expanding. This this is a rather short one. So what did we do? We defined science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and we trace the origin of science and its history from early humans to modern time. Excuse me. Have here. We also found that though Africa had an early start, it now lags behind other regions of the world in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I have no doubt that uh, this century, the 21st century, belongs to Africa. And uh, with people like Professor Demi Briggs, Professor Idowola Eka, and all of you here, Pro oh yeah, Professor Juma Shabani, from Burundi and all the others, especially our all of you in this class, uh, you will make Africa, you know, proud. So it's now time to take your questions, and uh, we'll try to provide some answers from my end and also from all the facilitators that are attending this uh, lecture. The floor is now open for questions and answers. So if you want to take the floor, uh, please. Uh, just unmute your microphone and let's have your question. Good morning, morning sir. Yeah, uh, good morning. Uh, just a minute now. Good morning. Yes. Uh, that's uh, good. You have the floor. Yes, yes sir. Thank, sir. You. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I did enjoy the presentation. My question had always been this. Each time I hear that Africa was the beginning or was where humans originated from. And then in between, there's a gap of there's a gap of discussion I cannot fix. What happened when I look at the early scientists who showed us in Africa, they were within the nineties. In the 17th and 18th, what was happening in Africa? Yes. Were completely dead in Africa? Were we not doing anything? I'm not I'm not able to fix that gap, sir. Oh yes, thank you very much. Uh I have a theory. And that theory is that uh the historians of science probably did not, either willfully did not, uh, look at what we were doing in Africa. And that is the challenge. I mean, that, that is a task that we all must do. Like I said, a lot of science has been going on in Burundi, in Ghana, in Nigeria, in DRC, in other parts of Africa. But were these efforts documented? They were not. So the historians of science were largely from the West. So it's what they can see that they could document. 
And uh, even if we had some interesting uh, developments in Africa, maybe they were not regarded as uh, good sites. So as you notice, ACE813 has a component on indigenous knowledge systems. And we are going to be showing the world what Africa has been doing. So the straightforward answer to your question is that we didn't go to sleep. We we're doing some science, but not documented well enough. Perhaps we had challenges that would not allow uh, our own science to be applied in a way that will cause like industrial revolution, that we see all manner of wonderful things happening in, in, in our region, in Africa, perhaps. And there could be several others, other reasons. So that's my, my narrow view of uh, the, the thing. And uh, if you read the world history, uh, the, uh, the world history of Africa, also, uh, as uh, written by UNESCO, you find quite a lot of these interesting things that are written there. So we didn't go to sleep, Kuli. Uh, 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 we were doing some things. I, I suspect that uh, the historians of science do not regard this as true science. They regarded these things as magic, as superstition. Like uh, a VC of uh, Ibadan wrote to me yesterday, how do we pigeonhole or how do we uh, uh, put things like superstition? Things like, you know, in those days, I don't know whether it's true or not because I, I, couldn't, I, I don't know how to document it, that somebody can live, uh, if I want to get to Burundi, if I want to get to Bujumbura just now, that there's some device that I have to use within a few seconds. I'm already in a uh, time travel. I'm already in, uh, <laughs> in Bujumbura. So African science, <laughs> so we had all of those things. But, you know, the West thought that these were just superstition, nothing. Mm -hmm. that, but we're, we're still going to be digging deep into it. So, uh, yes. Any no, sir, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for this wonderful and important lecture this morning. Thank you very much. Please uh, give your name. Uh, tell us your name and uh, uh, ask a question. We can't see you. We can't see you, though. We can't see you. But go on. Go on. Sir, my question is this. Or my point is this. When we said that the, the science, science uh, historians, can we say that they are actually undermining the of, of African scientists by not including them in the comprehensive history of science development all over the world. Okay, thank you very much. Good question. I've answered it in uh, the other question. Any other question? I've answered it in the earlier one. Yes. Yes, yes, sir. yes go ahead. Uh, uh, well, yes. My name is Lassisi, sir. Yes. And the question is that um, we've uh, heard that all these um, white people, the Oyumbos, when they bring their theory, they have their disciples. So people will be saying, I'm a pedestrian, I'm a, a copy and all those things. What are our great scientists doing in Africa? Making sure that the disciples they have, like the one we are having now, after this class, we will not go our different ways and start citing their, uh, another people's uh, theory. Yes. Yeah, I, I think you, you've hit the point, the, 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 you hit the nail on the head. Uh, you are not a hammer than a nail. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so the, the, the thing is for our scientists uh, to keep raising disciples that will uh, propagate uh, their, their, their worldviews and their scientific, uh, their scientific exploits. You know, rather than just depend on the West. But by the way, we need to note that we're now in a global village where we depend on one another. So collaboration is the way to go. Uh, as you, as we're, you want to note that the CTC approach, we're also extending it to collaborate with uh, people from other parts of the world so that the, 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 the idea, the concept, or the, or the approach can be globally accepted. So what I'm saying is that our uh, researchers should, uh, <laughs> our researchers in Africa, you know, should grow, grow, grow their own, grow their own disciples, like in Nostra, and then expand uh, globally. Thank you. So let's take uh, Mungo, uh David. David, Hello. raise your hand. David, you have the floor. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you, you Professor. Professor. Yes, thank you. Yes, we are waiting for you, David. 
Is it possible as we are in the same at the same level? Sorry, we can't see you. Next time, make sure that we can see you. We, we can't see you. It's very dark in your room. But please go on because we don't have that. Time. Okay. Th thank you, Professor. I, I want to mean: Is it possible to establish a new list of scientists since the beginning till now, be, between European and Africa? Because our scientists since the beginning of the world, they are not listed anywhere. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to let you know that uh, Wikipedia, uh, excuse me, yeah, Wikipedia has a listing of some scientists. Uh, but you see, for us to have that thing comprehensive, we've got to have our people in Burundi, in Ghana, our scientists, like you have Academy of Science. Professor Juma Shabani is the president of the Burundi Academy of Science. I'll use him as an example. So he has mm -hmm. to have a project where he will mm -hmm. document all the activities of the scientists in Burundi. From when Burundi mm -hmm. uh, came or uh, was established, I mean, uh, came as a country, to, to, to date, he has to get that compendium. And I'll tell you what we are doing in Nigeria for the professor. Just a minute, I'll just show you. We have, uh, I'll just show you the book. <laughs> Here, you can see it. Uh, for Nigeria, we are, we are having a directory. A directory of full professors. This is by the National Investors Commission. As you can see, uh, our boss there, Professor uh, Abubakar Damura, she does the executive secretary. We have a directory of the full professors in the Nigerian university system. What we have in direction? Every professor, whatever you are doing, what your, what your uh, research is, we have them in this, in this. you can't say uh, properly, but that's what we have in this direction. And we also have, we also have the CVs of all of them. So if you go in directory, if you go to the electronic one online, you just click on them, you find, you find, uh, find them. So the, the, the thing is for all our academies of science, like Professor Mosto Noah is going to come in another few minutes. He should, as president of Nigeria Academy of Science, come with a directory, directory of scientists in Nigeria from way back to date. What will he document? So, uh, just a minute. What will he so, document? It will document all yeah. the activities. It will document all their research, it will document, you know, all, all sorts of things. So back to you, David. That, that's good, Professor. But what I want to mean, I want to have some names from scientists in Africa as pioneer in uh, science at, uh, towards the world. That's I want to, to see. The list of scientists in, from Africa as pioneer of science. Okay, that, that's fine. If you Google, you find them on Wikipedia. But I'm going beyond okay. that. No, no, no. It's, the, the list is, is very short. The list is not is, uh, comprehensive. It's just those that they, they are able to pick. But there are many more, many more there. Many more there. For instance, Professor Juma Shabani is one of the greatest uh, mathematical physicists that we have in Africa. I've Googled, mm -hmm. I've done that one. You can't find, his, find, his, find him there. So it's incomplete. If his name is not there, then it's a useless list. Okay. okay. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Professor. Thank you very much. Mm. Yes. Uh, we can take uh, one more question. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, good morning, sir. Yes, take the floor. Yeah. Um, it's like an observation or a suggestion. Yeah, please, can we say that... Tell us your name. You okay, my name is Adiba Mohamed Kaudi, sir. That's good. Okay. Um, it's like an observation or a suggestion. Can we not say that history should be taught in our elementary and secondary school so that we can mention and appreciate... African scientists. Correct. It's just like when I was in secondary school, I never heard anything like um, a scientist in Africa I propounded this. It was when I got to the university that we started hearing names, we read about um, things that were written by some, like the CTC approach that was invented by you, sir. If not for the fact that we were in our institution, and there is nobody in our secondary education has heard about this. So I think if anything in our elementary school and our primary school education, it will, it will enable us to appreciate we Africans that we've gone so far, not just we cracking our names of uh, Michael Faraday, 
um, where the Thomas Edison and the likes. Yes, you are very correct. And uh, I'm happy to confirm that for Nigeria, uh, history is not coming back. But what type of history? You can't get any of the books in science that will talk about uh, 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 Professor Duwala Yinka and all of those people, uh, uh, most of Noha. Uh, uh, you won't find them. So we need to rework our history books so that, as you said, I'm very proud of what you have said, you know, move in that direction. I can see that our Vice Chancellor, Professor Duwala Yinka, will want to intervene at this stage. Professor Duwala Yinka, Vice Chancellor, Investor of Ibada. You have the floor, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. How can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. <laughs> okay, I, I just uh, felt that there should be a form of uh, documentation similar to what the last uh, uh, person mentioned. Because, like uh, we know, we grow a lot of yam in southwestern Nigeria, possibly the whole of uh, the south and the middle bit of Nigeria. It just occurred to me who taught our forefathers how to convert uh, yam to yam flour. I mean, this full technology yes. or to turn as ever into Gary. Yes. I think these are things that we need to document exactly. before we move up of mass production. I mean, they don't, they don't grow yam in Europe yes. or America. But who taught my forefathers how to turn yam into uh, Lugo and how to, even, how, to, how to turn into Amala and all sorts of So I think we need a lot of uh, documentation. I mean, for people, I'm just giving that one as an example people in full technology. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Vice Chancellor. You are very, very right. And uh, uh, I need you to do uh, a search for who taught uh, grandpa. Uh, that, that would be great, great grandpa that taught uh, your grandpa. <laughs> uh, but that's just an aside. So indigenous knowledge system is a scheme where we are documenting all of these things. There's a UNESCO Institute in Abeokuta, UNESCO Institute for African Culture and International Understanding, uh, where Dr. Femi and Roda Dibayo and Dr. Binkwe Akita, you know, they are, they are all uh, assi uh, technical assistants to, to, to this uh, project, you know, where they are. So we are documenting this. So thank you very much for bringing it to greater visibility. We will keep documenting and not just document and put it in the in the cupboard. Document and share with the rest of the world. Share with Europe. Share with North America. So that we know that great things have been happening in Africa. I want to bring the class to an end uh, by thanking you all for attending. And uh, we'll just have a, a break for five minutes. Uh, Professor Mosto Noah, are you on ground now, sir? Professor Mosto Noah. I've always been. Oh, I have always been, but I did. <laughs> but I, I wasn't using my video. Oh, okay. That's it. That's it. Until, oh, yeah. until my brother, you know, who started speaking, yeah, well, I wanted to see him. All right, sir. That's so, fine. no, I've been all, all through oh, that, that from great. the beginning. That's very fine. So, uh, as I mentioned, oh, uh, that's uh, Professor Michael Favre of the LG. We greet you. So, we're just going to have uh, a two minute break, and then we will get Professor Mosto Noah. We introduce him formally, and then we'll have the next uh, 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 lecture. Thank you. <laughs>